Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm super happy that you wanted to join me today because today I'm going to take you guys through how I make my own nut milk and oat milk from home. I have been including my homemade milks in different kinds of recipes and vlogs and you guys have been asking for like a thorough and comprehensive guide and I thought it would be better to do it in a video form rather than a recipe form but just to be safe I actually made both so you can find the recipes down below as well. You're very welcome. But before we get started we have a sponsor today. Yeah. Apparently Yas has become what I say whenever I have a sponsor. I'm very sorry that you have to listen to me but today's sponsor is Skillshare. Thank you so much for sponsoring this video. If you don't know Skillshare is an online learning community with hundreds of different courses and they have so many amazing ones. I really like watching other people cook and watching other people's recipes also for inspiration and sometimes you learn stuff that you didn't know but they also have tons of like DIY things and creative courses with painting and drawing and crafts and I am definitely there for that. I don't think I'm a crafty person but I definitely like picking up new skills and I am sort of tapping into embroidery things so Skillshare has been really really handy for that and right now there is a link in my description and if you click that you'll get two months of premium Skillshare for free. So thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now I want to talk to you about plant-based milk. First of all, if you don't know, I mean, if you didn't, you probably don't follow this channel. And if you don't, hey, click the subscribe button, come and be my friend. Um, but I am a vegan, hello. And for the longest time, I actually bought my plant-based milks. I use it in cooking all the time. I love to bake, I love to make sauces. And for that, plant-based milk can become really, really handy. I also love smoothies and I have them almost every day. Um, and I would usually buy them in Tetra Pak, which I thought for a long time, also pre-zero waste, I thought that Tetra Pak was just cardboard and that that could be recycled as cardboard. But for the majority of countries, Tetra Pak cannot be recycled at all. I think there are a couple of uh, exceptions for that, like in Sweden they recycle Tetra Pak, in Portugal I know they do, uh, and probably other ones that I do not know right now. But in Denmark and in many other places, Tetra Pak simply just becomes landfill waste or incinerated. Um, and that's kind of it. So it's kind of a wasteful material also because Tetra Pak, if you did not know, it looks like cardboard, but then there's also aluminium inside and there's plastic inside. It's not bueno. So for the longest time I wanted to try and make my own milks, but one of the first things that I heard and one of the things that scared me off um, for quite some time was that if you make it yourself it's going to get slimy, it's not going to be as good, and then I just decided not to do it. <laughs> but I have found a way, especially with oat milk, to make it not slimy but perfect completely perfect every single time and I want to share that with you today. So thank you so much for joining me in. Uh, the first one we are going to watch is oat milk and I'm trying out kind of, kind of a new format for recipes so tell me down below if this is something that you like. Uh, maybe I've been watching way too much binging with Babbage but I kind of like this format and I think it works very well for my videos as well. So let me know, I want to hear your takes on it always. But the reason why I'm kind of prone to watch oat milk rather than other kinds of milk is because oat milk has, out of all the different milks, the lowest carbon footprint. And that's because oats is a very forgiving crop. It's very, very easy to grow. It doesn't require as much water, pesticides, all this stuff. So the carbon footprint of oats is out of all the plant milks and of course cow's milk, which is the highest carbon footprint, it's just a-okay. Um, so let's get into oat milk making. When making oat milk, I like to use one part of oats to three parts of water. That's my overall measurements. But depending on how thick or thin you like it, you can adjust these measurements. Depending on what you need it for as well, you can also adjust. Because thinner milk is better on cereal and in smoothies, and a thicker milk can be good in pasta dishes or in baked goods. Before you blend it, you can also add some taste modifiers like a couple of dates for sweetness, some vanilla, some cold coffee, turmeric, really anything you like. You do not want to get slimy oat milk, and that happens if the mixture is warmed up or exposed to heat. I figured that if I use ice cold water and only blend it for about 15 to 20 seconds, it's going to come out perfectly. Blending the water and the oat will heat it up to room temperature, hence the short blending time. When the milk has been blended, pour it out and run it through a fine sieve or a clean kitchen towel or a cheesecloth. If you're super set on not having any small lumps or fibers, you can run it through several times, but I really don't mind it all that long. 
You can lightly pressure the milk through the cloth, but then again, make sure to be quick and brief and touch the milk as little as possible to avoid warming it up. Put the oat milk into a jar or into a bottle. This way, it will easily keep for four to six days in the fridge. But you still have the oat pulp left. Do not, and I repeat, do not throw this away. That would be totally unnecessary food waste. If you don't know what to do with it, you can either save it in jars in the freezer, but you can also simply add it to any bread or pancake recipe. It'll blend perfectly together and you won't be able to tell at all. After some time in the fridge, the oat milk may begin to separate, but that does not really matter. Give it a good shake before you use it and you're good to go. Da -da 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 -da. You're back! Great! I don't know what that meant. I'm so sorry, that was really cringy. Um, but the other kind of milk I want to show you is just nut milks in general, but I'm going to make it with cashews today, um, but you can use any kind of nut. I'm going to specify in the guide as well what to do with what kinds of nuts. Um, but the nuts that I'm using are actually dumpster dived, and I some time ago, like many months ago, I dumpster dived an amazing amount of nuts. It was super wasteful and insane and I actually vlogged it. So if you want to see that dumpster dive where I found all these nuts, you can go and watch it. I'll put it up in the corner right there and in the description. Woohoo. Um, but nuts generally have a much higher carbon footprint than oats. So it's not something that I, so I'm drawn towards if I have to buy them, if I have to buy something to make. The milk, I want to do oats because low carbon footprint, but if I dumpster dive nuts, I will use them for this kind of thing because I don't snack a lot of nuts like that. If I'm going to use it, I'm going to use it in like baking or in smoothies or in milks or in cakes and something like that. Um, so just wanted to make that clear. Of course, depending on where you live, the carbon footprint of nuts will differ a lot. But in Denmark, it's very high also because we have the transportation costs. Um, so depending on where you live, this might be totally different. This is just the case for where I am situated. But let's watch me make some cashew milk. If you want to make nut milk, that's also pretty straightforward. However, you do need a little bit more time to prepare. Soak the nuts overnight. If you're using cashews or walnut, you can go right ahead and soak them without any prep work. But I do recommend de-skinning nuts like hazelnuts and almonds. You de-skin them by covering the nuts with boiling water. Wait until the water has completely cooled off. Then you can slightly press on one end of the nut and the skin will come right off. Now you're ready for the overnight soaking. It is the next day, as you can see by the change of my clothes. Pour both the water and the nuts into your blender and blend for about two minutes. Here you don't have to worry about sliminess. Once again, strain the nut milk through a fine sieve, a clean kitchen towel or some cheesecloth. Then pour your nut milk into a jar or a bottle and place the lid you had hidden in your back pocket on top and place it in the fridge. Here it will stay fresh for about a week. The nut pulp is just as useful as the oat pulp, so don't waste it. You can use it in very similar ways to the oat pulp and it tastes amazing. So for my next trick, I want to show you how to make one of my favorite recipes of all time. This is my cashew carbonara and the recipe, like the entire detailed recipe, is on my Patreon in my ebook if you want to read the entire recipe. I also have bits and bobs on the blog about how to make cheesy sauces from cashew and nut milks. Um, but I want to make that to show you how to sort of do it and how amazing and delicious it's going to be. And also just because I really crave it, so that's what we're going to do. This is also to show you that you can use nut milks and oat milks for all kinds of things. Of course, the normal things that you normally use milk for, like pouring on cereal, putting in coffee and tea, baking with, making sauces, smoothies, all this kind of stuff. And homemade nut and oat milk can also... Oat milk? Oat milk. All of these things, they can do just as well as the stuff you buy in the stores. So I'm gonna show you how I do this. Start by chopping an onion and a clove of garlic. You can use any kind of onion that you want. I just had this lying that was just about to go bad, so that's what we're going to be using. Chop it as finely as you can for the best possible outcome. Boil some pasta. Any kind of pasta will do whatever you prefer, but be sure to save the pasta water because this has a lot of salt and a lot of starch in it. And uh, we're gonna use that in the sauce. Take a big stainless steel skillet and put it on medium heat. Bam, bam, bam. Put some olive oil into it and be very, very generous. You're also going to be needing some chopped parsley. I have this and yeah, some of the places it's not great, but other places it's fine. Then definitely some nutmeg. This is what makes cheese sauce taste like cheese, no kidding. And then lemon. This is a lime. I don't have a lemon right now, so I'm going to be using both the zest and the juice of this half lime. And... 
what else do we need? We are also going to be needing the last teeny tiny bit of <laughs> this nutritional yeast. Now that the oil is warm, we're going to add the onion and the garlic, like so. Just give it a good stir. And we're going to be using the cashew milk from earlier. You can use any kind of plant milk that you like, but simply because we're going to make something that's going to be warm, I like using nut milk more than I like using oat milk, because then there is a chance that it'll get slimy, unless that you like sort of control the temperatures a little bit better. But this is tons more forgiving, so for the kind of recipes that I normally use, this works really, really well. So we're going to add this and then the pasta water and just give it a good toss. It's going to evaporate a little bit, so you're going to make sure that it is liquid enough by adding pasta water as you go. Does that make sense? So now we're going to add lime juice as well as some of the cyst. Oh, and make sure that you save all your food scraps because they can either be composted or you can use them to make veggie broth. Now that the pastas are kind of al dente, we are going to turn them over into the skillet. Da, 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 da. We're going to cook them until they're finished in the skillet instead. And once they are as soft as we like them to be, which is soon, I see, then we're going to add the cashew milk, salt, pepper and nutmeg and nutritional yeast on top. Nutmeg gives me life. Then you add your cashew milk. Now the sauce is starting to come together. That is how that goes down. Cashew carbonara. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you liked it. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you thought of this or if you have any recipes where you use your homemade milks or whatever you might be using. Um, I would love to know how you would use these nut milks and oat milks as well. Let me know and leave this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Yeehaw! And of course, remember to subscribe to my channel because I see you guys. There's a lot of you out there that aren't subscribed and help a girl out. Be my friend. Once again, thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I will see you guys next time. Take really good care of yourselves. Until then, bye. I did that three times this video. Three times, that's too many times. Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys helped me create green zero waste contents and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye!